your uh, view, in fact, sage advice on contamination control, particularly plastic contamination? Well, plastic contamination is, is 90% associated with the bale wrapping. I think that's what you refer to. Uh, the USA has been challenged with the way they, they farm the cotton and the modules that seem to envelop the, envelop the, the plastic within the bale once it's produced. The, the, the Association in America is aware of that. They have to find problems to solve that because otherwise it takes away the total misconception that it, USA cotton can produce uh, contaminated free yarns. If it's not machine picked, uh, then there has to be a cultural change, whether it's from the farmer to the gin, how that cotton is collected. Uh, has to be more disciplined around that. Uh, my company were challenged with that probably 15 years ago in East Africa. The small measurements, the small improvements you can put in place, cotton bags, but it really is the education of the farm, education of the picking, uh, and education for the transport of the gin, and then the gin itself. It will never be contaminated free, like, such as a machine pig, but it certainly can help. See, the round modules have these plastic, right, that these fields produce them. So that's an issue, but people invest nearly a million to a million and a half on a John Deere round module and this plastic becomes an issue. People didn't plan. You see? I understand. No. No, they never foresee it for one moment, but they certainly recognize the issue now, for sure. They've had plenty of warnings from spinners around the world now. Can I can ask one question? Sure. Uh, I think definitely India's crop is small this time and there will be a requirement of at least 2 to 2.5 million bales to import. As I understand, US has about 85% already sold. Brazil is sold to China and Brazil is also barely available quantities. So from where, which part of the world India will be feeded? Yeah. Could it be West African or East African? East African has a very small crop. So what, who is going to feed India in the between April well, to September in imports, in case of such shortage. Yeah, thanks, Vinay. I would not dismiss USA, but perhaps the spinning mill has to lower its sights rather from a 31, 336. It may have to lower its sights to a 41, 436. Uh, that's for sure. That's a challenge in America. The volume's there. They would like to sell more cotton, but the quality is not there this season. Uh, yeah. Brazil is coming to the end of the season, if you like. Uh, you, you'll get pockets. There's, all, there's always, always something available, but I don't think it strategically fits with India because they're not used to it. But yes, West Africa probably still has 30% still to sell from origin. I can't tell you how much the merchants are holding. Uh, they'll be holding something for sure, but I don't think they're bearded some volumes. But, but I would stress they're the main two. East Africa doesn't come into it until maybe September, October. But West Africa is origins within an origin. Mills are very comfortable with Mali, but less comfortable with the others. They need to educate themselves and give, them a, give the others a chance. Hello. Hi, Carl. Uh, Carl, uh, in the next three months, what would be the driving force for the market? Uh, the trade war or uh, the fundamentals and the technicals and in which direction? Uh, the trade war will always be there. I think even when they, they announce they've settled something, I don't think that would be the end of the story somehow. Because uh, it's, it's one thing signing something, it's another thing acting upon, let's say, the, let's say the assignment, something that we're going to import X bales from USA over a period of time. Physically it has to happen and contractually it has to happen. But it, it, it's interesting to me, 
you know, three or four weeks ago, people were getting real, fairly bearish over demand, and for the right reasons. Yarn, yarn price was falling. Uh, yarn stocks, certainly in two or three places around the world, had begun to rise. Uh, and, they, and they're still, in certain places, yarn stocks are more than normal. But I would say over the last couple of weeks, uh, I've seen some reversal of the yarn price. Uh, I've seen more activity for spot cotton. Yes, China comes into that category also. Uh, but it comes into it, why does it come into it? It's got quota in its hand now for two million bales of cotton. Uh, as I said before, they usually sit on that towards the end of the year. But clearly, by their activity a couple of weeks ago buying Brazil, by their activity over the last couple of weeks buying Indian, some of those mills and traders are deciding to use that quota. They don't physically need it. Uh, so, if you'd have asked me three weeks ago, I'd said the market would stay around 70 to 75 cents. But now we're at 75 cents, of course. So, I'd like to see not just the demand continue, but more of the offtake continue downstream. I think the, world's be, the textile world's been challenged with, with the trade war, with Brexit, with demonstrations in France. All those things have put retailers on the back foot. Retailers who've decided to, you know, book 25% instead of 100% of their next three or four months. They're going slowly with their bookings. So I don't think that's helped particularly. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that answers your question, but it's sort of insightful, I guess, but yeah. No, that's where it is today, let's say. You know, one month ago, I'd have said it'd be stay within the range of 70, 75 cents. But I'm now at 75 cents. What do I say now? I think it, we have to see if China continues to go at these imports. They were buying Indian at 78, 79 cents. Now I'm hearing they've edged that price up to 81 plus. That is a, a pleasant surprise to me, frankly. I'd say they don't need the cotton, but at the end of the day, 81, 82 cents landed in China is still probably 10 cents cheaper than what they can buy domestically. So. <laughs> You're allowed to change your opinion. Uh, you have to be fluid of the market. You know, I would get defensive here because there's some demand on the horizon. But I'm not going to get carried away. Uh, I, you know, spinning mills today, do they think 85 cents landed cotton is acceptable to them? That's what they will be measuring. I think it gets borderline now. They were more happy when it was 82, 83 cents. Uh, but again, that comes back to where the yarn price, go, yarn price goes to. So if the trade war between uh, China and USA continues, and China is not buying a lot of cotton from the US, would the US farmers still continue to grow cotton in large numbers? Okay, sorry, can you just repeat? I got so if the trade war between China and USA continues, and China is not buying cotton from the USA, would the USA farmer continue to grow cotton in bigger numbers, that is? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, from my little knowledge around it, uh, at the present value today, I believe cotton is probably just about the best option for them versus other, other commodities in US of A for planting. Uh, that doesn't mean a massive swing, but it means a swing. And that's being reflected in the announcement of the acres, if you like. Of course, those acres have to be realized, but yeah, if that trade war continues, you end up with a large American crop of 22 million bales plus, on top of what's likely to be a Brazilian large crop, because they've been extremely happy over the last three or four years with their realization of margins. Then you have the reverse. The market will go down. Market will be lower. 